Hi, I'm Bob. Let's keep solving the computer exercises from four to six for chapter eight, heteroscedasticity in the textbook Introductory Econometrics: A Modern Approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's go to computer exercise four. For the first question, in OLS. Residuals are part of the variation in y that cannot be explained by x. So, if we regress the residuals on x, x will have no explanatory power. That is, the r squared is zero. We can also see it from the first order condition when we derive the OLS estimators, or from one of the properties of OLS statistics. The sample variance between x and OLS residuals is zero. It implies that the regressing residuals on x will give a zero R squared. That is why we use the squared residuals instead of the residuals as the outcome variable to do the BP test and the white test. We can verify it in data. For part two, we obtain the residuals from the regression and generate its squares. Then we regress the squared residuals on all explanatory variables and do the F test for the overall significance of the explanatory variables. The F statistic is two point three three and its p-value is zero point zero five eight. It is evidence against the low hypothesis of homoscedasticity at the ten percent level. For part three, the special case of the white test involves the fitted value of the outcome variable vote A and its square term. We can obtain the fitted outcome using the predict command with the XB option. The F statistic of the white test is. Two point seven nine and its p-value is zero point zero six four five. The result is consistent with the BP test. We reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity at the ten percent level, but not at the five percent level. Let's do exercise five. In the first part, we can use data's t-test command to do a t-test for the variable. The t statistic is zero point seven two, and its p-value against a two-sided alternative is zero point four seven. It is not statistically significant at the ten percent level. Another method is to regress the variable on an intercept and compute the t-statistic. It reaches the same result. We cannot reject the null hypothesis that the expected value is zero point five at any conventional significance level. Thirty-five games in the sample of five hundred fifty-three were played in a neutral court. For part three, the estimated equation is as follows: 
I report the usual OLS stand errors in parentheses and uh, heteroscedasticity robust stand errors in brackets. The variable neutral is the most significant, both practically and statistically. Playing in a neutral court is estimated to increase the probability that the spread is covered by 0.12, but the effect is still not significant at 10% level against a two-sided alternative. For part 4, under the low hypothesis, the outcome variable does not depend on any explanatory variable. Its variance is not a function of any explanatory variable. We can verify it in part 5. After regressing the outcome variable on an intercept, we obtain the residuals. Then we generate the squared residuals. Next, we do the BP test by regressing the squared residuals on the four explanatory variables. The F statistic for the overall significance is 0 0.47 and its p-value is 0 0.76. We can directly read the values from the result window. We fail to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. For the last part, it is impossible to systematically predict whether the spread will be covered using information available prior to the game because we find in part 3 that the explanatory variables are individually and jointly insignificant at any reasonable level. Let's find answers to computer exercise 6. When we describe the dataset, we find no dummy variables for the outcome, but a continuous variable of the number of arrests. We could define a dummy indicator equal to 1 if the person was arrested during 1968 and 0 otherwise. We use the recode command with the generate option to convert a continuous variable to a dummy variable. You can refer to my YouTube data videos for details. The estimated equation for the linear probability model is as follows. We use the predict command with the xb option to obtain the fit values and the summarize command to see the range of the fit values. It is from 0 0.0066 to 0 0.5577. For part 2, we construct h hat equal to the fit values times 1 minus the fit values. Then we estimate the linear probability model by weighted least squares using weights 1 over h hat. The estimated equation is as follows.
the standard errors in the weighted least squares are smaller than OLS. The estimates do not change much. The significance of the variables is similar. The average sentence length and the total time in prison are individually insignificant. To find whether they are jointly significant, we can use the test command to do an F-test. The F-statistic is 0.88 and its p-value is 0.4129. It suggests the two variables are jointly insignificant at even the 40% level. We can also use another way to do the F-test by hand. We estimate the restricted model by WLS and save the restricted sum of squared residuals. Then we estimate the unrestricted model by WLS and save the unrestricted sum of squared residuals. Finally, we compute the sum of squared residuals form of F statistics and its p-value. We have the same result as using the test command. Thank you for doing the computer exercises with me. I hope it helps. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.